Hey guys, so today we're going to be learning about how to necrop see your own rabbit. Um, this is a doe that just passed away. Her name was Amelia. Um, she's a Britannia Petite Rubia Dwight Senior Doe. I did notice that she um, had started wasting away uh, over the past few days um, and her diet was reduced, so she still was eating. Um, it's important to note the behavior of the rabbits before you lose them. Um, she, uh, she just wasn't quite acting herself. Um, her eyes looked very dull. She didn't look very healthy. Um, she didn't necessarily have weepy eye, but the inside corners of her eyes uh, were just a little bit, um, you know, had a little bit of eye buggers. Um, one of the major things to do when you're doing necropsy, uh, of course, you want plastic down. Um, sometimes I do mine outside, sometimes I do them inside. You especially want plastic down if it's inside. Uh, you also want to have a paper towel down. Um, I prefer to have a paper towel just because then I can wipe off things off my hands. Sometimes the bodies have fluid, so it's kind of nice to have something to soak it all up before it uh, gets on your floor. Um, another thing, I got these actually at the dollar store. They're just really sharp, small crafting scissors. Um, when doing a necropsy, uh, I'm always very careful not to cut the organs, so when I'm using a regular knife, it is, you know, just a little bit more difficult. Um, so first things first, before you even touch the rabbit with the scissors, you need to make sure that um, it is in fact dead. Um, usually I uh, practice cervical dislocation on the ones that are already dead. Um, that way I could just make sure. Um, nothing's worse than getting, you know, the rabbit all the way opened up and then finding out its heart was still beating. Um, so this rabbit already had, uh, the cervical dislocation done, so she is, uh, for sure gone. I'm just going to double check by checking the eye reflex. Her eyes at this point should be dry feeling. Uh, my gloves should stick to them. Um, and she should have no reflexes. I should also look pretty dull and pale. You could also check the gums. The gums should be pale, um, if they're dead. Um, and then if you do cervical dislocation, you could actually feel the neck. There should be a finger's worth of space between two of the vertebrae, which um, means a proper dislocation. So when it's a um, when it's a sudden death of a healthy rabbit, the first thing that I do is I look at the spine. So at first I palpate it um, to make sure that it feels straight. I want to make sure that there's no breaks. And then what I do is I take my scissors starting at the neck. And of course, anytime I pick up a rabbit that suddenly uh, passed, I check the neck first before I dislocate it. Um, and, you know, that way I could be sure that the rabbit uh, didn't break its neck. So what I do is I cut a single line down the back with the hide. And what I'm checking for is I'm checking for any bruising on the spine, which would indicate um, a fracture. So there's no obvious signs of bruising. Um, the meat looks good. I do see that she was incredibly uh, low on body score. So you can see that her spine and hips are sticking out. Um, her loin is the same width as her spine below. Um, so you could obviously see that this issue, or this rabbit had a nutritional issue. So next what I do is I turn the rabbit upside down. I usually face it this way, turning it on its back and I'm holding it. And then what I do is I cut through the skin right here to start with. It's kind of hard to see with my gloves, sorry. So I cut the skin up. Um, sometimes we get through the belly wall already. That's not too big of a deal. Um, I try to get just the skin to make sure I don't accidentally nick any organs. And then I stop right there at the rib cage. Um, this is the best time to observe any odors of the rabbit. Um, is once you open up that body cavity, um, you could really smell whether or not there's an infection going on. 
Um, if you wait until later to really take note of the odors, um, you could be um, just smelling regular intestines and such that you've already ruptured. So I have the rabbit open. Um, the first thing that I know is that she has barely any mass in here. Um, her cecotrope does, or her cecum looks small, but, um, normal. I do see some pellets moving through her intestines. Everything looks like it has good circulation. Nothing look, looks like it died. Um, she was bred about, um... A month and a half ago? Yeah, a month and a half ago. Her uterus looks healthy. That's what's right here. Um, yeah, that looks healthy. I don't see her bladder, so she probably urinated when she passed. So don't pull out the intestines and throw them away yet. We still want everything in con or intact. Next, we're going to check the kidneys. Okay, so here's something really interesting that I noticed right off. So let's look at this kidney. See how it's pretty large? A bit bigger than the size of my thumb, right? Now if we look at this kidney right over here. Very small. So in comparison to my thumb. We're going to be pulling those out in a few minutes. So we'll take a look at them. Um, I've noticed rabbits very commonly have kidney issues. So this isn't too surprising to me. So next we're going to be cutting up into the chest cavity. So I usually cut the skin first. That way I can see what I'm doing when I'm cutting the actual chest. When you start with the skin, you want to go all the way up through the neck. Sometimes rabbits will choke and that's what kills them. So you need to actually examine to make sure that it wasn't choke. All right, all the way up. So there's some bruising from where I dislocated her neck. Um, she actually was still alive when I found her, so she was dispatched. Um, I don't see any obvious signs of choke, and what I'm doing is I'm palpating to feel for any masses. Don't forget um, about the spot right here. I believe that's where their voice box is. Um, you know, if you feel that hard spot right there, that's that's not a foreign object. Okay, everything checks out. I'm also looking for any bruising or trauma to the ribs. I don't see any. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and I'm gonna cut these soft cartilage pieces. I'm gonna cut it all the way up. And then when I open up the chest cavity, I'm going to be cracking the ribs. So you want to carefully open up the chest cavity because you don't want to squeeze the blood into the lungs because you want to see the lungs. So these lungs are perfect. Spot on. The heart looks beautiful. Yeah, everything in the uh, chest cavity looks great. Um, one thing that I'm going to go back and look at, because I realized I kind of skipped over it, is the liver. It's got a little bit of fur on it. It's a great color. Um, it's a little stiffer in texture than usual. Um, could mean that she was dehydrated, but it has very good color. I don't see any spots indicating coccidiosis. Um, okay, just looking at it now, I'm thinking some sort of kidney issue. Uh, everything else checks out. So next what we're going to do is we're actually going to remove the organs to get a closer look. So since this isn't really a meat rabbit, it doesn't really matter where you break off the intestines or if you really do. Another thing to examine is the stomach. I don't examine the stomach until I pull it out. And the reason why is because I want to examine it very closely for any signs of hemorrhaging or um, for any ulcering. Um, her stomach looks beautiful. It was full, so she's been eating. Um, let's see what the contents are. Yeah, so just rabbit food, hay pellets, 
Um, yeah, there's some of that grain that I gave her. Okay. Oops. Drop some of that. So we're going to keep that on the paper towel to make it easier for cleanup. Okay. Let's compare these kidneys side by side. Um, this blood is coming from the uh, up in the liver area. There's a blood vessel that I ruptured. Um, I'm doing the necropsy. Since she wasn't dead for very long before I did the necropsy, some of the blood does run out when I pop those vessels. So, side-by-side -side comparison of the two kidneys. It's very obvious there's something wrong. So, uh, they're not really wanting to come out. One of the other things we're going to be looking at is for pitting on the kidneys. Um, pitting on the kidneys, uh, it's a sign of, I believe, E. caniculi, um, which is a parasite. So we're going to pull out these kidneys that, you know, the, the different sizes. There's the small one. Okay, so here's something I noticed. I just cut this one out, and um, I kind of cut, you know, some of the tissue that was around it. A lot of water just came out, and when I squeeze the kidney, um, I see that this passageway, which goes to the bladder, is filling up with liquid with white in it. Not white liquid, but liquid with white um, chunks and such. So I'm going to cut out that whole passageway. Well, not the whole passageway, but part of the passageway. So I could look at that as well. Oh, I just cut some blood vessels open. Alright, so it's a little bit bloody because I cut the blood vessel next to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of, there we go, get some of the blood off of the paper towel. Okay. So when I squeeze this, let me move the rabbit aside so we can use this towel. All right. When I squeeze this, I see white, a clear coming out. It's slimy. It's also white that's coming out with it. The blood's coming from next to it. You can see those white spots. Those were from the inside. That's what came out with the clear fluid. There's some blood that came out with the kidney. Um, that's not normal. Um, typically when we're cutting open the kidneys, we don't see any blood. Okay. Oh, I'm going to get some of that fur off my scissors. I think I'm just going to cut this in clear in half, just to get an idea of what's going on on the inside. Okay, that's not normal. The whole inside of the kidney is open. So that was where all that clear fluid was coming from. That's the other half. This is normal size for her breed. Even just half is bigger. Let's see what a normal one or the the other one looks like. We don't yet know if it's normal. When you're using scissors, always be careful not to cut your gloves. Because again, you don't want sick rabbit germs inside of your gloves. So it's also a bit open. So 
So.